Meet Big Mac. As I showed in the build video, link above and below, this computer is based around the ninth generation of Intel's CPU lineup like those used in the 2019 27-inch iMac. I wanted to start with a platform that has the most in common with the existing Macs today. Big Mac has the Intel Core i9-9900K CPU and is the same CPU in the i9 iMac. The difference being Big Mac enables proper cooling and the performance is not thermally limited as in the iMac chassis. With eight cores to match the eight cores in the entry-level Mac Pro for six thousand dollars we'll get to see the comparisons and we'll also include the i9 iMac now the motivation for this case comes from hackashack over at tony mac x86 where he used a previous generation of the fantex evolve case as soon as i saw it i knew i wanted to build in that case however it has been updated with a revised model the evolve x which has been slightly redesigned to improve the chassis airflow and cooling the case color and rgb color was inspired by my mini mac pro setup. I haven't shown this powered up before. However, when using this setup on my desk, the deep blue lighting against the space gray exterior looks subtle but nice in my opinion, and so I replicated that on a much larger scale with Big Mac. For the motherboard, I wanted to find the most compatible, and in searching the golden builds at the forums of Tony Mac, I found a posting by KCSJ. This post is the most popular and the most active of any of the golden builds. In this build, he used the Gigabyte Z Z390 Designate. For me, the choice was simple, as it is the only motherboard that comes with Thunderbolt 3. It is a well-built board that has a 12-phase VRM to support higher power CPUs and overclocking. In the build video, I missed a few connections to the motherboard that I want to point out. That would be the CPU power connector from the power supply. Then there are the front panel connections like the audio connector, the power button, the USB connector, and the USB 3.1 connection. Finally, I didn't show the addition of the Fantex Halo digital RGB fan frame, and I connected that to the digital RGB connector from the front panel. One of these things is not like the other, and just make sure you order the digital version. As I mentioned before, the CPU is the 8-core i9-9900K. This CPU has a base clock speed of 3.6 GHz and a turbo to 5 GHz. However, with a simple setting in BIOS to enable MCE, or multi-core enhancement, and with a capable CPU cooler, it will run 4.7 GHz, all cores, which is much higher than the i9 iMac, which struggles to get past 4 GHz on all cores for any length of time. The CPU cooler is the Master Air MA620M. It's a six-pipe design that has an integrated fan and RGB treatment with diffused lighting. It has its own controller that is magnetic, allowing it to be placed on any metal part. So I placed it on the back side for easy access by swinging the rear glass door open, and I can select the color and the mode. This must be manually set, but once set, you're done. You can decide to go with several colors. The one I have here is blue, or green, or red, or maybe you want to add a little flare, or a lot of flare, or if you really like the rainbow, or maybe the rainbow with flare or you can just turn it off. For the RAM, I used 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz CL16 RAM. It is the best value choice today. While it is not ECC RAM, unless you're designing rockets or airplanes, are into critical scientific, medical, or financial applications, it's really not required. The SSD selected will be one terabyte, matching the iMac Pro in size, and at the fast NVMe speeds in the Samsung Evo 970. The Radiant RX 580 Nitro Plus is a well-cooled GPU, as evidenced by the heat pipes, which enables it to run at zero fan speed when not under load for a very quiet experience. The build quality of the case is very solid, and as a premium case, you get that premium feel. It is classified as a mid-tower case, however, you can see that sitting next to my classic Mac Pro, it is similar in size. The case also comes with easily removable air filters, one at the front and one at the bottom for the power supply. This case is very configurable. It's big on the inside and easy to work in. You can use it to add plenty of storage with up to 10 hard 
hard drives and nine SSDs. You can even decide to move to a water-cooled system in the future. For me, this case is fantastic and it checks off all the boxes for me, which is rare. And while it is more expensive than others, I justify it by knowing I will use it for the next couple of upgrades and I will get many years of use from this case. Overall, here's how the Big Mac compares with the new Mac Pro. The process to build one of these systems is not so intuitive. There are thousands of videos, thousands of posts, information that seems to contradict one another. It is very difficult to know where to start. If you don't have a good understanding of computers, operating systems, drivers, and how they work in general, then this can be very intimidating. Most people don't understand this and just want the files, and that can often be a recipe for disaster and weeks of frustration. And when things don't work, you won't know how to fix them. You must have the skills, capability, time, persistence, and fortitude to actually stick with this. Sure, you might get it running once, but what happens when an update bricks your system? This is truly not for everyone. For me, it took a while just to understand what the tools were doing and why certain files were needed to be configured. I can't say I fully understand it now. I followed the vanilla guide as it seems to be the cleanest method to install. I'll put the links below in the description. You can watch videos and follow along. However, it seems that it is such a moving target and that all the latest and greatest information can be found on the websites. This is not something you'll wanna do on a whim. Miss one step and you can easily spend days trying to figure it out. If you're going to attempt this, lock yourself away, shut off your devices, Put the do not disturb sign on the door and maintain total focus and follow the guide. And when you have issues and plan on having issues, search around in the forums because someone else has already probably posted the solution to your problem. Perseverance is key here. And again, this is not for everyone. How does it perform? Let's roll the benchmarks. To compare Big Mac to the Mac Pro, we can just calculate the relative percentage between the two. When at 100%, they are equal in performance. When greater than 100%, Big Mac wins. When less than 100%, Mac Pro wins. For single core performance, Big Mac is a whopping 34 to 38% faster than the Mac Pro. For multi-core performance, you can see Big Mac is 16 to 17% faster in Geekbench, where the workload is not as heavy, and it is 25 to 38% faster in Cinebench, which heavily loads the processor. The heavier the multi-core load, the faster Big Mac is in relation to the Mac Pro. For GPU performance, if you discount the strange OpenCL performance lead of just 4%, since OpenCL was deprecated in Mojave. Big Mac is between 13 to 20% faster than the Mac Pro's 580X due to its 17% higher boost clock speed. One place the new Mac Pro will beat Big Mac every day is in its quietness. When the CPU in Big Mac is pushed hard for long renders, the CPU fan will kick up and get louder and although it's very subtle, not annoying or loud, it is noticeable. If you are into audio applications, you could easily clock down the all-core boost speeds from 4.7 GHz down to about 4.3 GHz and the machine will be very quiet. The only way to get better performance with this consumer platform would be to get an i9-9900K Special Edition CPU, which is just a faster version, but still has eight cores. With Big Mac's commonality with existing hardware, this would be a simple implementation for Apple to create a desktop Mac. But could there be a better solution? In the next two parts, we will look at AMD Ryzen platforms to see how well they perform and how well they compare to the new base level Mac Pro. Like this video if you learned something, 
share this video as it greatly helps the channel and subscribe for more. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you in the next one.